Welcome back to part two of the loopable rainy window in Houdini. In this section, I'm going to talk really quickly about the lighting and rendering. I'm going to try to keep this really simple. As I said in the last tutorial, I'm not going to show you everything that I did because you can look at my scene because I provided it in the link. Now, I'm not going to be including the background photo that I have, but you can just replace it with whatever photo you want to use. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we are in Houdini, and now let's turn on two of these objects. We have the glass, and then we also have the background. And so now let's head over to the material context, and let's also switch over to the render view. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this connection really quickly, and let's look at the principal shader. And there are two things that we need to make sure of. First of all, we need to make sure the transparency is set to 1, and then let's also take this the roughness in the, under the specular and let's set that to 0. Now I'm going to go click the render button and we're going to take a look at what this looks like. We can see that all we see right now is the background photo and the way we set up that background photo is, let me go back to object level really quickly, if we look at this background right here we can see that we just have a grid with a UV project so that we can get UVs on it and let me go back to material level and you can see right here, here's our material builder for the background and if we click on it all that we're doing is we're taking this background photo and we're using it as a texture and we're plugging it into the emit color of this principal shader. So if I scroll all the way down, you can see that the emission color right here is receiving color information from this photo. And I've changed the, the emission intensity to 0.75, but you can do whatever works for you. And so that's all that we're doing for the background photo. So let me back up one level. and let's go look at our principal shader for the glass once more. Alright, so for the principal shader, let's scroll up to the top and let's find an attribute, or find the attribute called roughness, and now let's turn this up. And immediately we see the glass start to fog up. And so this is the key to making this look realistic. What we need to do is randomize the values to the roughness so that some areas look more fogged up and some areas look less fogged up. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can use a texture, you could use some of the built-in noise patterns, or you could use a point attribute. For this example, I decided to use noise and also a point attribute, and the point attribute we got by using a wet map. So I'm going to take this right here, the product of this, I'm going to plug this into the roughness and I'm going to let this render and I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, I've let this render just a little bit and we can see that this is looking a lot more realistic. We have some areas that are fogged up more and some areas that are fogged up less. And like I said, the two ways that I decided to use are just using some noise patterns and then point attributes. For the noise, I just use a simple turbulent noise and then I also use two point attributes that I got by using a wet map. And so let's go look at the wet map really quickly. I'm going to go back to object level and I'm just going to stop this render. And I'm going to go back to the scene view and just zoom out a little bit. And let's click on where it says glass right here. And in order to get the wet map, I've just used this, this wet map HGA that I made. You can also download it and I'm not going to show you how to use the wet map because I've already made a video on that. But to keep it simple, all I'm doing is I'm importing these drops right here and I'm just taking the information of these drops and I'm creating a point attribute that shows where on the glass the water has been and actually let me cancel that so it doesn't simulate I've already cached it out and let me let me just move the playhead a little bit further actually rather than do that let me put it back to 60 I'm just gonna go to the time shift really quick and you can see that this is where we're getting our wet map information from you can see that or rather this is where we're getting the point attribute wet from and we're also using this to drive the roughness too so that the areas where the drop has been are less rough and you can see that this attribute fades over time so that after a few moments that area fogs up again just like it normally would and then we're also just uh, we're doing the same thing for the static drops too and so if I click over here on this right here and let me create a color node really quick and I'm gonna attach that and I'm going to do ramp from attribute and let's click on this arrow and you can see that we have two which is one of them's wet and we just looked at that one but I also talked about that we got an attribute from the static and so I'm going to click down here and I'm going to do wet static and we can see these are also we're also getting a wet map from the static drops too 
And so if I go back to the material network, it, we can see that we have these two bind nodes right here. And this is binding the wet static. And then this node is binding the wet, which it comes from the, the dynamic drops. And we're multiplying that with the turbulent noise in order to get this look right here. So we can see that this would be the static drop uh, wet map, and this would be the dynamic drops wet map or wet map. And then you can see all these patterns right here are being created by the noise. So as we can see, nothing it's nothing super complicated. All we're doing is we're taking noise patterns, point attributes, and textures to modify the roughness to give us variation. And that's all there is to it. Oh, I almost forgot. There's one thing that I wanted to say really quickly. Occasionally, when you're trying to render something, now, we technically don't have a light in the scene because we're just using the background and we're glowing from it, or we're, we're emitting glow from it. So occasionally, let me, let me hit the render button really quick so that we get this started. Occasionally, it won't look correct, and I'll show you why. Let me go to the out, or, and then let's click on our mantra wrap, and I'm going to go to where it says objects. By default, there's a setting that says headlight creation, and it's turned on by default. And so when you do it, it may look like this, and that's because it thinks that there's no light in the scene. So it's creating a headlight by default. So what you want to do is you want to come and make sure that this option is turned off because it doesn't detect the glow coming from the, the background as a light. So make sure to go ahead and turn that off. As I stated earlier, I know I didn't quite go over everything that I did, but I did leave you the scene so you can go back and look at what I did. Now, I really hope that this tutorial and the previous tutorial were helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a like and always feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much.